I was about to go on a little anti-science rant, but after you saying all those nice things about Alan's research review, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say Well, that go one. on an anti-science rant. We could do both. I just, this, and this is nothing to do. I actually think Alan is, brings the perfect amount of science to mm. his positions. Um, the, the pendulum seems to have swung too sciencey in terms of training optimization, in terms of exercise selection, rep range intensity, like very, everything being very, very measured versus and and less of like the classic 1970s Arnold intuition based uh not not just approach to training but approach to life right mm -hmm. like go to bed at 8 37 p.m and wake up nine minutes before sunrise and get 19 minutes of sunlight directly on your retina at a 15 degree angle at this exact time and don't drink your coffee until 76 minutes before you or after you wake up and and then you only have this much like everything is becoming so measured uh to a fault. And, and I think that many people, myself included, could benefit from just like trusting your gut and, and acting from that position more than this hyper analysis, which can lead to paralysis via analysis and just get out there and live rather than overanalyze everything. Could not agree more. It's, but, and it's funny, like that's not, that's not anti science. That's like, I think real science points to, more than anything is just putting in the work. Like if you do the work, regardless of what order you do it in, regardless of what time you do it at, regardless of and just if you do it consistently, we see the results are essentially the same. And that's really it. Regardless of the line of pull, or if you're doing 11 reps or 12 and a half reps, or you're doing this, or like just fucking work. Mm -hmm. And like, as long as you do the work, it's going to work out. But most people, they just don't do the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I actually think a lot of people, I was talking about this uh, with some people during the event that I was speaking at. Um, it's, there was this one woman who came up to me in particular and she was like, I've been a coach for a number of years, uh, not like 10 years, probably like three or four. And, and she's like, I, I've learned so much. And she was telling me all the certifications that she has and all of the books that she's read. And I could tell just from talking to her, she's incredibly smart. You know, when you're talking to a coach, you know, who really is worth their salt, you can tell within 15 seconds if they actually know what they're talking about. Like this woman was incredibly smart. And I knew she she had invested a ton of time and effort into learning and studying. And she was saying she has this feeling of guilt now that she should still be learning. And, and she's she's it, it, she's not sure at what point she should stop mm -hmm. learning and start implementing or essentially like stop consuming content and start creating her own content type of thing. And and I told her it's not black and white. It's not like you have to stop learning. But right now, 100% of your time is spent learning. What if you drop it to 50% of your time studying and then 50% of your time is spent creating? And then eventually maybe like 30% is spent learning and 70% is spent creating. It's not either or. But after a certain point, no matter how much science you know, no matter all, it's like you've got to, if you really want to implement this, you've got to start teaching people. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people use science or studying essentially as a crutch that prevents them from ever progressing. And I know some people do this with college and would do this with higher level education where they're so nervous to go out into the real world that they just keep looking for more degrees because they're so comfortable in that education world that once they would leave the education world, it becomes very scary and overwhelming and they don't know what to do. They're no longer getting a letter grade. So like they don't know how, how to, uh, it, how to exceed or, or su succeed, uh, excel in life outside of that controlled environment so they just keep falling back into that habit of well i'll just learn more i'll learn more i'll learn more which is great but after a certain point it's like you've got to implement you, you've got to do stuff you've got to put stuff out there implement and then realize that and people don't realize this that you're going to continue to learn while you're doing even separate from the studying even when you go from 100 percent studying zero doing to 50 50 you're going to learn through doing like here, I'll give you a, give you an analogy. You're the analogy king. You can rate this one to 10. Like you could sit there and read about how to swim. You could read a thousand books and watch a thousand YouTube videos and study the great swimmers. But until you get in the pool, 
Like you're not going to learn how to swim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Seven. Yeah. You didn't like it that much. Six and a half. Well, what I'll say is I I think. I I need it. I'd like a number, please. What I, uh, seven, I'll give a seven to that one. The the reason that I'm going to add to it is just because this woman and many coaches, they're in a position where they want to coach people and they want to help people. So I'm in this analogy, she knows how to swim, but she doesn't know how to teach swimming. So she can watch YouTube videos on how to teach the breaststroke and how to teach the free, the free style and the backstroke. I'll, I don't know the swimming stuff. But like she can watch all these and read all these on coaching and manuals and the science. But the only way she's going to learn how to coach someone how to swim is to get in the fucking pool and start teaching them how to swim. And then she's going to work with one, one person and then 10 people and 20 people and 100 people. And ideally your hundredth student you will teach way faster than your first student because you'll have more knowledge. And, and But it only comes from getting in the pool and teaching. It's like you have to actually practice the skill of teaching, not just the skill of learning. Mm. I, think, I think it was a nine out of 10, to be honest, but we'll, uh, we'll press on. We'll call it eight. Call it in the middle. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm going to give it a nine. 